welcome to Face to Face. And today we're going to go to Colombia. We're going to talk about the peace process. We're going to talk about the killing of the social leader. I'm with Marta. Welcome to Face to Face. Thank you, David, for the invitation. I appreciate it. So that. we have been working for many, many years. You have been funding an organization in New York uh, with objective to, uh, to promote the peace in Colombia. And Certainly. Yeah, uh, the Movement for Peace in Colombia was uh, founded in uh, 1999. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, we, we did it because uh, there was a big concentration uh, across from the United Nations um, of about 3,000 Colombians and other people, a small amount of people from other places that came to accompany uh, us in this effort to promote peace and, uh, you know, to end the war in Colombia. And it was probably the first time I saw so many Colombians without aguardiente get together. Yeah. So <laughs> we just simply... Aguardiente, it's a drink. <laughs> people drink. Fire it's just water. People. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought that it was worth um, capitalizing uh -huh. on that uh, newfound desire for ending the war. And the movement for peace in Colombia is still uh, going Exit, on. Yeah. It exi mm -hmm. exists. It's just, I'm no longer with them, uh -huh. uh, but it, it's still there. And obviously, you can find it in the web if you want. So to, to, to go very quickly, historically, the, the conflict in Colombia was a disaster. It was a, the biggest migration of people in the whole world. Well, uh, Actually, it is not necessarily because of the conflict. Okay. Uh, I mean, it it was the, in my opinion, yeah. and it's a very personal, this opinion, is more about uh, an excuse. It's, the conflict was most, okay. uh, mostly so, an so excuse they use the for that. So they used the conflict to, to um, take the land yeah. and... and uh, Colombia has had conflict since it was born as mm -hmm. a uh, republic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been war after war, mm -hmm. and as one of the uh, political experts says, is that every time we do a peace process, is uh, it's just the beginning of another war, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, it, it seems to be, this to be right. happening right now. Yeah, like uh, it was a big peace process with the m most, the oldest, the largest, the oldest uh, guerrilla in the whole history, mm -hmm. even in not just uh, Colombia, but the, uh, the world. Mm -hmm. it, it's the, it's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they were, uh, uh, what, 60 years of <laughs> <gasps> the, the head of the founder of the, uh, of the FARC died of old age. He wow. didn't. <laughs> Nobody killed him. No, he died of old age. Wow. So uh, it, it's, it's uh, and it was horrible. And yes, um, definitely was very damaging. But uh, but in my opinion, precisely, it was more damaging because it was a great excuse mm -hmm. for the very far right um, and uh, and. Uh, landowners to actually get more of the land and more of the riches of the Colombian yeah. uh, um, land. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, in 1999, 19, uh, 2000, when uh, Uribe came to power, he had already created a combi village with an, a president, a president that was actually uh, the, Samper was the uh, the process ocho mil was called a thousand mm -hmm. process. It was he was put in there by the cartels, the Cali cartel. So you see, we have a, we have a very complex society. It's, it's very, not an easy thing to no, take no, no. a look at. It's not easy to talk about this because it has and it so was, many pieces. All, all the social structure where yeah. one the military, the paramilitary, yeah. and, the, 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 and the businesses, so, and the, the home yeah. owner, and, and the political parties, yeah. and then... Exactly. They were initially called self-defense yeah. uh, groups, and it it was my experience as I work, because I'm a social worker, and I was uh, doing some work over there with, they were called the Aguapaneleros de la Noche. Uh, in the night, they will 
go out uh, and do outreach for drug addiction, mostly, and uh, give out bread and uh, our uh, national yeah. drink, agua panela, yeah. <laughs> which is... Which is uh, very good, very which good. is uh, <laughs> sugar of cane. Yeah, yeah sugar cane. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was my experience. One night I, I tended to people who were sleeping in a hallway of a, an old uh, government building, mm -hmm. and the next day they were all dead. At six o'clock in the morning, they were all wow. dead. They had been killed by this uh, a newly created convivir, and um, and it was a kind of kind of cleansing, social cleansing. Uh, they they coined also a a word, disposable people. But as you can see, it's mm -hmm. more than it's cultural, it's mm -hmm. social, mm -hmm. it's economics mm -hmm. is, and also the incredibly powerful um, international interest mm -hmm. because um, our it's very economic yeah. e economy is very dependent. Yeah. Uh, it really belongs to somebody else. Yeah. And I will say that belongs in this mo at this moment to the United States. Yeah, Nothing is done in Colombia without, without the accusations yeah. of the yeah. United States. Yeah. The um, ambassador decides whether or not things can be done or not. Yeah. So that is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. The other issue is the drug, uh, the drugs, the coca plantations, which are enormous. enormous. But you can't have that if there is no acceptance, if there's no reason for it. No, of course. No, 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 no. It, uh, I'm talking about governmental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so there are political experts who clearly say Colombia is a narco estado, yeah. narco state. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, a mafia mm -hmm. <laughs> grown country. Mm -hmm. And so when we are talking about violence and we are talking about confrontations and all of that, we have to think about the economic reasons, the uh, the powers behind. Well, I mean, in the U.S., you have the military complex who control yeah. most of... Well, Colombia has seven, uh, some people say more, but uh, at US least base. seven U.S. bases. Yeah. There is no reason because we are supposedly in peace. Yeah. So you have them mm -hmm. because you want to, what, spy on somebody else or control something? So. So right now, uh, after the peace process, was been very interesting process. Whatever happened now, but, but the peace process was very interesting. Very much so. For years, they managed to do what had been impossible for, and many other administrations, including the Uribe administration. Yeah. Uh, Uribe administration, those eight years when Uribe changed the constitution to benefit himself because he re-elected himself through that. And we know, and the person who uh, gave him the vote for that is, is the GD's politics thing. It is, it's, it's already um, uh, condemned for it, that she was bought. Her vote was bought, bought, yeah. uh, uh, bought to mm -hmm. actually give him that second so chance at the presidency. Change, yeah. So all of this corruption mm -hmm. at the level of the state, but friendly with the powers, very friendly with the powers, despite all of that. 33 uh, congressmen and women were jailed. So, they were yeah, so people are arrested and you that. have a lot of social leader in many communities yes. who are killed. Yes, so, that has happened all through our history. But what but, has but, happened after the, the peace process, uh, I'm, I'm saying all through our history because we have uh, killed um, candidates, presidents, yeah. and all kinds yeah, of, yeah, yeah. you know. On this plane, has been, helicopter. Yes, yes. I mean, the, the, you old, know the old movies. <laughs> that you can, well, Colombia has killed a lot of its good people. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, what happened with the peace process is that it gave, uh, and by the way, whoever wants to read it, it's, not, it's less than 300 pages. 
It's, it's, it's really not a difficult thing to read, mm -hmm. very easy to read. Mm -hmm. And the agreements were very clear, yeah, yeah. especially for the land, because yeah. the land has been the major issue in yeah. Colombia. Yeah. Major issue yeah. has been the land. And through the paramilitary activity in the years of Mr. Uribe, uh, Dr. Uribe, whatever, uh, a government, uh, over seven million people were displaced. And those people who were displaced left six million um, hectares of land mm -hmm. in the hands not of the guerrilla, not of the paramilitaries even, not even to the to the army. They are in the hands of big landowners yeah. and companies like Chiquita Banana, for example. Yeah. Who control. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and those so are between the now. coffee, between the coffee, the drugs, and then all those <laughs> are product banana and so on coffee and so forth. Coffee is minimal. It, yeah. it really, Colombia leaves out of the coca leaves. Yeah. That's, that's really the main income. And it's, it, it permeates everything, all yeah. society. And it practically has uh, this, this mafia-like people uh, control the political yeah. and, uh, and, and the uh, construction business and a lot of other things. So you were part, because I saw photos, of a protest a yes. few weeks ago in yeah. New York yeah. uh, concerning the um, assassination of social leader in Colombia. And, and that's that's exactly the issue that because before we knew who were killing them, the paramilitaries were killing them mostly because they did most of the killing. Uh, there were killings by um, the armed forces. We know that the so-called false positives mm -hmm. and things like that, and mm -hmm. selective assassination mm -hmm. and collaboration with the massacres and things that the paramilitaries did. But after that structure was dismantled, it's somewhat institutionalized uh, with the uh, Ralito Agreement. Um, they continue to work like behind the scenes. And I remember that it was precisely at the uh, embassy in Bogota that it made me very angry, actually, that I was told that it was no longer paramilitaries, it was the black uh, eagles, or Aguilas Negras, it's called. It. And I, I got very angry with, <laughs> with the oh. uh, representative of the embassy. Uh -huh. I said, do you think I'm stupid? <laughs> um, because we knew, and yeah. actually we know that they don't exist. Uh, 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 I don't even know how you call it, like assassins, for hire, yeah. sicarios, uh -huh, uh -huh. that's what they are. Yeah. And so they may believe they are Aguilas Negras, but yeah. it do, they don't not, exist yeah. as a group. Yeah, yeah. They are the Golfo, the Clan del Golfo, and uh -huh, all of that, but uh -huh. the Aguilas Negras or Black Eagles don't exist as a group. It's not an organization. So somebody's hiring yeah. these people outside the law to kill their the enemies, political em enemies, whatever they find, you know, like they are challenging people, new people are challenging those positions, so they are killing them through these um, hi uh, higher killers. Uh -huh. And also, if you have land and you're so-called uh, a uh, third party in good faith, Supposedly, you bought this land knowing that people have been displaced, but you bought it in good faith. You didn't know. Everybody knew. But, uh. So these people don't want to give up that land, don't want to return to the displaced population. From yeah, qui est, qui est, this proposal is part of the peace process. It's it's the, to, exactly. It's to re distribute the land to... To return, to return. the people who were displaced yeah. to their land, yeah. to give back the yeah. land to these people. And now that land is fully uh, planted of, uh, uh, they call it African palm and uh, Oil, sure. other things yeah. that 
mm -hmm. are for fuel. Mm -hmm. And so these people don't want to give it up. Yeah. So if you are defending land, or if you are promoting the return of the people to their land, you become a target. Yeah. And it's very possible. Actually, the name of the person is Ariel Avila. The, he is the um, a subdirector of a foundation, Pass and Reconciliation Foundation. And he's got down all the information, everything. So it's, it's very clear. We don't know exactly how many people they have killed, but it's about between 550 and 750. Uh, and uh, there, are, there are FARC um, ex-combatants yeah. mm -hmm. that uh, gave up sure. their, their arms they and they yeah. have been killed, like yeah. 130 approximately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and anybody, like if you're defending the water, then you become a target for those people yeah. who want to exploit the water. Yeah. If you are against um, more oil drilling or something like you're that, you become a target. Yeah. And it is systematic, not because of who is killing them, but because who they are. So they are all defenders of what is vital to the people. But the number you are giving, the scale of the work, it, it's, I mean, that's the problem with, with, I mean, you have two countries in the world who, who people who are known to organize. It's Italy and Colombia. So Italy give us the church and they give us the communist party. They give us, I mean, for the Colombians, they are the king of organization because yeah. it's never at the small level. It's always... No, everything is big in Colombia. Everything is I remember big. the first year of the Plan Colombia, which was assigned between um, Clinton and Pastrana. Uh, our president was Pastrana. Mm -hmm. He presented to Clinton a different plan, well, very different. And I read that plan uh, three months before it came out in Spanish. I read it in English. Actually, I have the English version oh, yeah? of it. Yes, oh, great. it was made in the U.S. Oh. <laughs> and uh, when I read it, I, I said, it's not a plan for peace. This is a plan for war. Yeah. And it was, yeah. definitely was. And in the first year, there was over 200 massacres in the first year of the implementation of the Plan Colombia. So that was, that's why I'm saying, if, if it was not somewhat uh, accepted, <laughs> internationally, so, it would not have happened. We have all these issues about Venezuela. Venezuela has never done what Colombia has done. Colombia has uh, mass graves. Uh, over 80,000 uh, disappeared people. Mm -hmm. We don't know where they are. We have over a quarter of a million people assassinated, hundreds of massacres. So nothing of this scale has ever happened anywhere else. In, 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 anywhere else in Latin America. Mm -hmm. We're worse than all the uh, other countries together. Pinochet is a baby compared to what the others have done in Colombia. Pinochet wow. was nothing. 9,000 people. We have killed 250. Yeah. So no, it's, it's, a, it's a great scale. Everything is big. But somehow, the international community does nothing about it, or very little. But does the international community understand it? Because that's also a, 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 quite complicated from outside to understand that type of scale on informal story. It's, and I'm um, telling you, from Italy, it was the same story. When Italy yeah. came to the European community before the day before they came in, 80% of the market was black market. 80% of mm -hmm. the production of Italy was on the black market. The shoes, whenever it was all black market. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, for Europe, it was like, you have to clean your mess. I mean, it was, it was you know. It, but, it's, but this is the interesting thing. A lot of the money, the drug money, has to be washed, laundered. And how do you laundry money? 
How do you do that? So you can buy an iPhone in Colombia cheaper than you buy it here. Yeah, of course. In the US. Yeah. You, there is enormous amount of construction going on. Yeah. And investment. Not everybody. Yeah. Not everybody. Of course not. Not everybody is uh, laundering money. No. But there is a lot of it involved. A lot of it. But in, in, in the U.S., so some country in the world right now are talking about removing the cash. Why are you going to use cash? Nobody's using cash. I mean, the maximum you're going to spend is 20 bucks. On your trip. What are you doing? Oh, cash? It's not at that little scale. No, 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 no. no, no. no but so the U.S., uh -huh. the cash in the U.S., it's only used for traffic. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's only use of, tr of, of, of the cash in the U.S. I mean, yeah. look, in your money, you spend how much you spend in cash. You spend yeah. 20 bucks. I mean, people are buying buildings in New York City in cash. Yes, yes, I know. So, and not only in, the, in New York. I mean, but, uh, I. No, no, but I'm saying. So in Europe, it's the same. So, we so tried to. We made a bid in, uh, in an apartment in, uh, uh, in Almeria, in Spain. And uh, our offer was fair and very close to the asking price, but somebody came with one on top of the other. And. Goodbye. <laughs> no, 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 no. So it's not, uh, and yeah. uh, I mean, right now Greece is being practically oh, yeah. bought by the Chinese. Yeah. It's fine. It, yeah. That's what happens when you have these calamities, these economic yeah. calamities. Yeah. And Colombia has um, managed to uh, maintain some stability. Now it's somewhat hard it's because it, yeah. the, the yeah, dollar really. For the last, like, Eight, nine years, yeah? Yeah, but it has managed to maintain some stability, I believe, due to the drug trafficking. Mm -hmm. I think that's what really supports the economy of Colombia. And uh, uh, I, I'm not just saying it myself. There is a, a, a political expert called Gilberto Tobón who has analyzed that mm -hmm. uh, deeply, and, and he says it's openly and clearly, it's just, this is a narco state. And it survives because of it. And co it's corrupted to the most highest levels of the government. Obviously, there is some good people who suffer enormously um, because they no, are accused of a lot of, of good whatever. people. I mean, I went many times, and then I'm, I'm know, talking about from, in, yeah, the, no, in, the, in the government. Yeah, yeah, I'm not talking have, necessarily about no, no, the, no, but the even people politically. That I mean, people. you have uh, yeah. Mokus, It's a very interesting guy. You have. I mean, yes, I can give yes. lot, uh, I can give <laughs> lot no, of names. Like many that names. Who are doing uh, honest, honest, decent people who doing. may or may not think like us. Oh, I mean, no, I no, am, no, but we are making a big contribution. We are showing things that could be done. We are. Yeah. Uh, we have Robledo, yeah. by the way, because he he, he did a, a political control um, a session in the Congress, he's now being sued for uh, uh, slander. It, 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 this is the kind of thing they live through every single day. Anybody who is a political leader or a um, human rights activist or a, a, a land a defender, any become a target of these powers that have been there forever. No uh, how, how progressive how? person, no progressive person has ever controlled the country. No way. How so? And then because we're going to have to close. So what 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 will be for you a solution or a process of solution? Well, because I'm. I, I mean, there's no solution. Absolutely. There's no solution. It's, it's only a process of solution who can be developed. Well, we, I am hopeful. Yeah. Why am I hopeful? Because I think people have started to see the truth. Mm -hmm. They started to see exactly what is going on behind mm -hmm. the scenes and who's doing what. Mm -hmm. And so I think the support for those hardcore uh, extreme right, violent people has diminished enormously. It has diminished greatly, yeah. which is fantastic. Wow. We had not seen this in many years. I think despite my many difference with uh, ex-President Santos, the fact that he accomplished yeah. that peace yeah. process yeah. 
although and he did not finalize supporting it, but still, well, I, I take it that way. I'm very grateful for the contribution. Um, that contribution was a, a life changing yeah. for Colombia. Yeah. It's an opportunity. Yeah. It's, a, it's a long, it's breathing. Totally Colombia is breathing. So I think the fact that many of the attempts to dismantle the peace process has fa have yeah. failed yeah. in the Congress, they have not succeeded. Mm -hmm to dismantle it. Yeah. They have chipped at it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they haven't dismantled it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the courts uh, are doing their job, they are doing their job, and that people are being mobilized. No, no, and that's what I say. I mean, I the, think that's yeah, exactly what is yeah, going to, if we are going to save ourselves, is because the people have to yeah. support this process. Yeah. That was your show uh, face to face and please keep watching your news on presenza.com and uh, hope to uh, hear from you very soon. Thank you very much.